All right, good morning and welcome to our weekly Bible prophecy update. Once again today we have a lot to get to. I know I say that often, but today especially, so we're going to get right to it. Today I'm going to address the mask mandate that is now required both indoors and in outdoor areas where social distancing isn't possible. Over the last several weeks, I've received numerous emails from both local and online members, many of whom have asked to remain anonymous for fear of losing their jobs. Uh, Many of them are in the medical field. So I've taken the time and looked at everything that was sent to me and all the videos I've watched, articles I've read, and research I've done without exception, refute the effectiveness of face masks. Now, let me hasten to say that there are those that are wearing face masks today, and by no means uh, is this intended in any way to disparage you or discourage you from doing so. But I do want to address this matter, because the truth is, Not only are masks ineffective in protecting anyone from coronavirus, they can actually make you even sicker and may even result in death. Wow, Pastor. (laughs) Well, this is why I sense from the Lord that it's incumbent upon me to address this, and perhaps more importantly, talk about the prophetic significance of this. In order to do that, I'm going to start with a very informative email from a brother here locally. He's actually my go-to guy. He asked that I don't mention his name. I know many of you know who he is. His initials are... No, I'm not going <laughs> to... I mean, he's, he's just been such a blessing to me, and he's just, I, 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 you know, actually, I, I pray that when I get to heaven that God gives me his brain. I mean, this, you know, just, he's, he's, the way his brain is wired, I mean, it's just amazing. Anyway, so he emailed me and, and explained to me why it is that masks don't work. So I want to share that with you. He says, I started thinking about how ineffective cloth masks and even N95, N-I-O-S-H approved masks are against the COVID-19 virus. So I thought I might pass on what I found in my research. First, a comparison to get a feeling for virus size. Note, A micron is one millionth of a meter, or 1,000 microns in a millimeter. A human hair is 100 micron in diameter. I know nothing of this. A human blood cell is 7 microns in diameter. A bacteria is one half microns on average, and A coronavirus, get this, is one-tenth of a micron. He then goes on to calculate thread count on cloth masks and the holes in cloth masks, concluding that if the holes were a square, you could stack 7,000 microns vertically and 7,000 horizontally to fill the hole with 49 million viruses packed side by side, top to bottom. You'd have to be pretty sick to spew that many viruses through one hole. But that is just one hole in a mask 
large enough to cover your nose and mouth. What we have created is a screen door (laughs) to our house using six inches by six inches weld wire fabric, concrete reinforcing wire. Now that's not going to stop any bugs. Now let's look at the N95 NIOSH approved particulate mask. The N means it is not approved for oils. And the 95 means it will stop 95% of any particulate three microns and larger. But we already said that the virus was one-tenth of one micron in diameter. Pictured here is a box of N95 masks with the warning that reads as follows, and I quote, Use for certain particles. Misuse may result in sickness or death. This is a different brand pictured here. Listen to this warning. This product is an ear loop mask. This product is not, and these are all in caps, a respirator and will not provide any protection against COVID-19 coronavirus or other viruses or contaminants. This on the box. Back on March 31st, Fox News published an article about how the U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams said, quote, the data doesn't show that wearing masks in public will help people during the coronavirus pandemic. What the World Health Organization, WHO, and the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, have reaffirmed in the last few days is that they do not recommend the general public wear masks. He then explained the reasons why. On an individual level, there was a study in 2015 looking at medical students and medical students wearing surgical masks touched their face on average 23 times, Adams explained. We know a major way that you can get respiratory diseases like coronavirus is by touching a surface and then touching your face. So wearing a mask improperly can actually increase your risk of getting disease. Adams also said that the N95 masks aren't as effective for the general public, as one might think, saying N95 masks have to get fit tested. As a medical professional, I can't just go out and wear an N95. I have to make sure it's properly fitted and I have the right size in order for it to work properly, he explained. In early March, Dr. Anthony Fauci was interviewed on 60 Minutes, and he was asked about wearing masks. The question posed was, quote, there's a lot of confusion among people and misinformation surrounding face masks. Can you discuss that? Fauci responded by saying, quote, the masks are important for someone who's infected to prevent them from infecting someone else. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with face masks. The interviewer interrupts Fauci saying, you're sure of that? Because people are listening really not closely to this. Fauci then says, right now, quoting, people have no reason to be walking around with a mask. 
When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing the mask might make people feel a little bit better and might even block a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. Often, there are unintended consequences because people keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face, close quote. You'll forgive me, I, I have to show you this photo. It went viral, pun intended, by the way, on social media. And it shows Fauci with his mask off after throwing the first pitch of the 2020 baseball season at a Washington Nationals game. I won't comment on the pitch. Uh, Sounds like you saw it. Again, in addition to masks being ineffective, they can also pose health risks, especially when wearing them for long periods of time. I took the time to compile the information from several sources, many of whom, again, are doctors or nurses. And I want to sort of summarize the conclusions for you. Several studies have found serious health issues from wearing a face mask, such as difficulty breathing, leading to a reduction in blood oxygenation, hypoxia, or an elevation in blood CO2 hypercapnia, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, headaches, and other life-threatening complications. To add insult to injury, these drops in oxygen levels are attributed to impairment in immunity, if you can imagine. If this weren't bad enough, both the oxygen deprivation and the immune system impairment create this perfect storm, especially for people with cancer. And here's why. Cancer grows best in a microenvironment low in oxygen. In addition to cancer patients being at an increased risk, so too are those with heart issues by virtue of the prolonged episodes of hypoxia increasing the risk of both heart attacks and even strokes. As I've shared with you in the past, I have asthma and I am unable to wear a mask for any length of period of time. If I do, uh, I end up gasping for breath. I went into the bank. This is interesting. Who would have ever thought you'd go into the bank with a mask and they give you money? I'll, I'll let you think about that one for a moment. <laughs> so, and of course the line was long, and I, I was in there for this, you know, elongated period of time. By the time I got out, I mean, literally, I ripped the mask off my face, and I'm just gasping for breath. I was starting to wheeze. I, I just, I mean, I just, <sighs> you know, I've often said that I'm a, a very blessed <laughs> pastor. I Many online members have sent me, uh, in fact, I, I want to show you what one online member sent me. It's, a, it's an asthma mask. Check this out. It says it right on there, asthma mask. Here, let me show you. No, for real. How do I look? I don't think it's my color. I think I'm an autumn. <laughs> I had another online member send me a 
exemption and legal rights cards. I want to talk about that in a moment. But there are those like myself that are supposed to be exempt, right? And we're not even required to disclose our medical condition under the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA. But (laughs) no mask still means no entry. And (laughs) here's this screenshot of these cards that another online member sent me. One card is notice of legal rights to not wear a mask. And the other one is notice of legal rights to not receive a vaccination. So I carry them with me. Yeah. For the online member that sent that to me, thank you so much. I'd like to get another 100,000 of them if I could. (laughs) So the face mask card states, quote, I am exempt from any mandates and or policies requiring me to wear a face mask. Wearing a face mask poses a serious health risk to me. Under the ADA and HIPAA, you are not legally allowed to inquire about my medical conditions, and I am not required to disclose any further details. So there. It doesn't say so there. Organizations, get this, and businesses can be fined up to $75,000 for the first violation of the ADA and up to $150,000 for subsequent violations. Also, the back of the card has info (laughs) to report a violation. I know what you're thinking. Have you tried to use this? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I have to confess, I, 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 I haven't used it yet, but I'll be sure to let you know what happens if and when I do. Uh, I think they still allow one phone call, so I'll uh, let you know. In all seriousness, we have a serious question that needs to be answered, and the question is this. If masks don't protect you, and can even cause serious health problems, then why are we being forced to wear them? I know you're not going to like this answer, and the reason I know you're not going to like this answer is because I don't like this answer. I need to warn you that the image I'm going to put up on the screen is a little disturbing, so either close your eyes or turn away. But face masks are a symbol of slavery, silencing, and submission. And I believe the mandate is to gauge the willingness of the masses to comply and be controlled by preconditioning. The imposed restrictions have been met with little to no objections, as the masses have essentially acquiesced to the mandate. It seems that many have made drastic lifestyle changes under the banner of a coming vaccine, which is being touted as the golden ticket, if you will, to get one's life back, to get one's freedom back. Sadly, the masses will clamor for said vaccine out of utter exasperation and desperation so as to be given back that which was taken from them in the first place. Oh, I can't wait to not have to wear a mask. However, there will be those who refuse it, 
which will then lead to a system of validation vis-a-vis -vis certification in the form of a vaccine identification. We've talked about this in depth over the last several weeks. Absent this proof of vaccination, you will not get your life back. And <laughs> you will be required to continue wearing a face mask in public. You know what's interesting about that? Prior to this coming vaccine, wearing masks was a symbol of compliance. Oh, I mean, I went for a walk the other day with my little doggy buddy, my little puppy. I love my doggy. He loves me too. And we're crossing the crosswalk. I'm not wearing a mask. And by the way, neither is my dog. Where I, I'm sorry. I actually saw somebody. They, they, I think they call that, they don't call it a mask. They call it a muzzle. Hmm. I digress. Crossing the crosswalk, beautiful sunny day. Just praising the Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is good. It's good for me to get out from behind the computer and just, you know, breathe fresh air and work on my tan. <laughs> my wife always says she likes the dark, handsome type. I'm working on the handsome part. So here comes this guy on a bike with a mask. And he's giving me stink eye. Have you had this happen? Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's you don't, you're not wearing, you are endangering the public safety and health of the community. I mean, and, and he looks, hey, where's your mask? He says it to me twice. Hey, where's your mask? Hey, where's your mask? And then I just ignored him. And I continued walking. And then he started mumbling. I couldn't hear him because he was wearing a mask. <laughs> so wearing a mask prior to the vaccine is compliance. But when there's a vaccine, it's no longer compliance. It's defiance. How about that? You know, there's actually those who are uh, now labeling people anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers. Well, that's a thing. Now again, when, not if, the vaccine is available, as we're being told, there will be those who refuse the vaccine and the mask, which will then restrict them from buying goods and services, basic goods and services. So this would mean that they would have to either wear the mask when they go through the checkout or do what I do, just I, I make my wife go to the store. <laughs> now, that might be sustainable for a period of time. However, it wouldn't be long before they would be forced to comply. And it's very likely that at that time, it will then become the mark of the beast, as we've talked about, that we're told about in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Now, we don't know exactly when or even exactly how this will happen. But what we do know from Bible prophecy is that this will happen. For those who might be skeptical with respect to this scenario, 
May I just kindly ask that you consider the following. I want to start with this very interesting YouTube video that was posted last Thursday. It was a heated vaccine debate between Robert Kennedy Jr. and Alan Dershowitz. It was moderated by Patrick Bet David on his YouTube channel. He started by playing a clip from a previous podcast interview with Alan Dershowitz, which we actually covered in the update back on May 24th. In it, Dershowitz stated, and I quote, you have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread the disease even if you disagree. You have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open your business. I'll add slash church. To which Jason Goodman, the interviewer, interrupted and saying, I tried to catch the screenshot. He's going, wait, can I stop you? No right not to be vaccinated, meaning if they decide you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Then Dershowitz replies by saying, quote, absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. Dershowitz then goes on to say, quote, the alternative is to live in your home and don't get vaccinated and never, ever leave your home. But if you want to interact with other people, the Constitution does not give you the right to spread your illness to other people. And you can disagree. You can be a dissenter, leave the country go into a bubble, but what you can't do is say, listen to this, I don't agree with Dr. Fauci. Take the law into your own hands and decide to spread the disease. That is not a constitutional right. Dershowitz goes on to say, I would like to see a government mandate if a safe vaccine is developed for COVID-19, I hope it's mandated and I will defend it and argue that in the Supreme Court of the United States against your views. Wow. So that's how this interview started off with, was with this clip of him saying that. And he was asked if he stood by those earlier statements, and he not only stood by them, he almost in some ways doubled down on them. Well, as the interview goes on, I would highly recommend watching this. It's a little over an hour. Very, very interesting, very informative. So Dershowitz asks Robert Kennedy this question, quote, I would like to throw a question out to Robert. I think I know the answer. Robert, would you be against a law that mandated the wearing of masks in public for everybody, even by people who don't approve of wearing the mask? After refuting the claims made by Dershowitz on vaccines, Kennedy answered the mask question this way, and I quote, I have read at least three med reviews involving hundreds of studies on masks and the majority of the studies. In fact, there's a BMJ study from 2015. It says that masks are actually likely to spread the disease and make you less healthy because the carbon dioxide that you're breathing and the people who wear the masks are more likely to get sick, close quote. You'll forgive me for saying this this way, but mask is one letter away from mark. That's not a play on words. 
And if you really think about it, right now, currently, I cannot, like you, go into a store and buy anything unless I have an M-A-S-K. It's not going to be long. The handwriting's on the wall before that M-A-S-K will become the M-A-R-K. And without the M-A-R-K, you cannot buy or sell or do anything. You need to live in Dershowitz's bubble. I truly believe that it's a matter of time before the aforementioned scenario plays out. Now, in all fairness, I could be wrong, but I'm having considerable difficulty seeing all this just kind of go away. Do you remember when this all began, we were told just you know, stay home until we flatten the curve. Wear masks, social distance, until we flatten the curve. Listen, I've, I've seen a few curves in my life, but that curve got flattened, and we still couldn't come out or take the mask off or hug one another or open the church back up. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, I, I can't see a scenario where, you know, we're, we're going to wake up one morning and our news feeds are going to be basically, hey, not only is the curve flattened and the cases dropping, dropping and, you know, it's, hey, <laughs> It's all good now. You can take the mask off. I don't see that happening. And they've told us as much, because the narrative continues that COVID-19 is never going away, and life will never return until there is a vaccine. Now, there is good news. Some of you are looking at me like, there is. <laughs> yeah, there is. And it's for born again Christians. And the good news is that we are not going to be here when this happens. And the reason why we're not going to be here when this happens is because the rapture has to happen first. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's, <laughs> listen, I, got, I need to explain something here because I, I've come under some uh, criticism as of late because I, we've been addressing some, would you agree, very intense, you know, matters. And yet I, I like to laugh. I'm sorry. I just, you know, it's medicinal. The proverb says that laughter is like medicine, and I need a lot of medicine. And it's not a vaccination. I need, I need the laughter medicine. And, um, and it's the joy of the Lord, man. It's the joy of the Lord, and that's my strength. And so I've come under criticism like, how can you, you know, be so humorous when this is so serious? Can't you be serious? No, I can't. I just can't. I'll try. But I mean, I know it's serious, but here's the thing. I know Jesus <laughs> and Jesus is coming. And this is an indication of just how soon it is that Jesus is coming. And I have joy. And you can too, by the way. I'm going to talk more about that if you'll hang in there with me about how you too can have this joy. It's a real joy. It's pure joy. It's the joy of the Lord, and it comes from the Holy Spirit that indwells every believer in Jesus Christ. 
That's why. That's, yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. I mean, sometimes I get giddy. People are like, what's the matter with you? I just know that all of this means one thing. And that one thing is that trumpet's going to sound. And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we who are alive and remain are going to be caught up, raptured up to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with the Lord. And I can't wait. And I know it's going to happen soon. Okay, I, I feel better. I have a lot more uh, that I need to cover. So uh, stop doing that. Okay. <laughs> Yes, the rapture must happen before this does happen, however, and there is a however. That's not to say that it's not going to get increasingly difficult for Christians and the Christian church prior to the rapture. Actually, it already is. And the persecution could very well get even worse under the banner of this current crisis. I don't know if you heard about this on Friday. The Star Tribune published a report about this sharply divided U.S. Supreme Court decision denying Calvary Chapel Dayton Valley, Nevada's appeal to strike down a 50-person cap on their worship services. In a 5-4 decision, the high court refused to grant the request from the Christian church east of Reno to be subjected to the same COVID-19 restrictions in Nevada that allow casinos restaurants, and other businesses to operate at 50% of capacity with proper social distancing. That Nevada would discriminate in favor of the powerful gaming industry and its employees may not come as a surprise, but this court's willingness to allow such discrimination is disappointing. Justice Samuel Alito wrote in a dissent joined by Clarence Thomas and Brett Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh also wrote his own dissent, as did Justice Neil Gorsuch, who said, today's world, quoting, with a pandemic upon us, poses unusual challenges. But <laughs> there is no world in which the Constitution permits Nevada to favor Caesar's palace over Calvary Chapel. Wow. I like that. Interesting, Caesar's palace. Huh. What an irony. I think of when Jesus when he was trapped. I, I love it. Oh man, sometimes just in a, in a, it's sanctified of course, but I just like to read the gospel accounts when they try to trap Jesus, like we got him now. <laughs> Let's see what he says to this. So here's this, you know, coin. Uh, should we pay taxes? They got their iPhones recording the response. And Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. The late Larry Burkett, who founded Christian Financial Concepts back in the 80s, had a saying, I really love it, and I've quoted it many times. He said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, give to God what is God's, but don't give to Caesar what is God's. Caesar's palace. Back on July 9th, the Honolulu Star Advertiser published an article that was 
I mean, it was basically a full page. Huge picture of this Calvary Chapel on the mainland, San Antonio, Texas. The headline, Reopen Churches See Cases Surge. I mean, they lay the blame of the surge in cases solely at the doorstep of the churches, which is kind of interesting to me. You know why? I don't know if you know this or not. Pastor Mac, by the way, talked about this on Thursday night. Uh, This Thursday, I really encourage you to come. He's going to do part two. Did you know for the last two months, 60 days, two months in Portland, Oregon, you know what they're doing now over there? Have you heard about this? The rioting? Huh. No case searches there. I don't see a... I, I, I mentioned this last week, I think. Sure way to absolutely no way get COVID-19. Just go riot. But boy, you go to church. Woo! I don't know if I'd do that if I were you. Have you heard what's happening? You'll forgive my cynicism. Had a brother send me a meme. It said... Go to church, and if the police show up, just say you're rioting (laughs) for Jesus. (laughs) I'm like, yes, that's it, that's it. All right. Listen to this quote. (laughs) This is the Honolulu Star. No friend of the church, dare I say. I mean, no disrespect. And if you work for the newspaper, praise the Lord. God is a forgiving God. But anyway, (laughs) I'm sorry. That was not good. (sighs) Quoting the article, in Texas, Pastor Ron Arbaugh said his church, Calvary Chapel of San Antonio, had followed the letter of the law and tried to practice social distancing since it was allowed to reopen in May. But now about 50 congregants and staff members, including the pastor and his wife, have tested, keyword positive, for the coronavirus. Arbaugh said all the cases had been mild so far. Uh, I I don't have the time today. Perhaps the Lord will present the opportunity on a future uh, update to talk about the dynamics of testing, testing positive. Keep in mind, the number of cases is rising. Do you realize that A coronavirus is a cold virus and a flu virus. I better leave that there. Last Saturday, Jack Hibbs sent me a text message with this photo of the Champion newspaper, which is a local newspaper there in this article with the headline, (laughs) Churches forced to go outside for worship. Quoting the article, Calvary Chapel Chino Hills, Pastor Jack Hibbs presented a Bible series inside the church on Wednesday, and the parking lot was full. After his talk, a Facebook video showed him mingling with his congregants while not wearing a mask, with plenty of hugs and handshakes. The pastor was prayed over by a group of faithful who circled around him, laying hands on him while not wearing face coverings. Several residents contacted the champion with concerns about the church possibly spreading the virus. They said they contacted the Chino Police Department, the City of Chino's Code Enforcement Department, and the San Bernardino County Public Health Department. 
with no apparent response. That's what I'm talking about right there. (laughs) I suppose, and the Lord knows my heart on this and my integrity before Him, but this is probably the right time to go on record with the official position of this church as the pastor of this church, which as you know is my profound privilege to be. This is our formal position. In response to the city and county of Honolulu's Thursday, July 2nd amendment to emergency order number 2020-18, which requires, quote, all individuals within the city to wear face coverings while outdoors in public spaces when maintaining a physical distance of six feet from persons who are not members of the same household or residence is not feasible. And whereas section 11 on page 35 of said amendment limits, quote, in-person spiritual services, we have been forced into non-compliance. While we certainly wish to obey the laws of the land, as the Apostle Paul exhorts us to do in Romans 13, verses 1 and 2, the city and county of Honolulu has regrettably and unlawfully overreached, and as such, we must posture ourselves, as did Peter and the Apostles in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, who after being told that they had strict orders not to teach, proclaim, and worship Jesus Christ, stated, we must obey God rather than man. Moreover, the city and county of Honolulu, respectfully, this is not in defiance, respectfully, has exercised unlawful authority ordering us to disobey the Word of God and the God of the Word. Simply put, God has not given the government authority over the church, its pastors, and or its leadership, and is in fact prohibited from any interference with church matters that would in any way overrule the church's God-given authority. Furthermore, the church of Jesus Christ is not subject to government officials. Rather, government officials are subject to Jesus Christ. Finally, we will never seek the government's permission to assemble as a church, nor, and this is very important, Are we contending for the constitutional right vis-a-vis the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, which states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof? And here's why. Our religious freedom of worship is a command given by God, and not a privilege granted by the state. And that's why we will not ask for said permission. That's our formal position. And at this time, we'll just bow our heads and close our eyes, and you can leave if you want. (laughs) Don't flatten anybody's tires in the parking lot on the way out. Now, for those of you here locally or If you're watching online and you're here on the island, I I really need for you to hear me when I say this, and all of you here today. If any of you are in any way uncomfortable with our position, please know that we absolutely, truly, truly understand. Perhaps it would be best for you to just watch the services online, should you wish. But if you do come, and please hear me, be prepared and be prudent. And let me explain why. 
We've already had a couple instances like that which took place at Jack's Church in Chino Hills, California. In fact, one was just last Sunday uh, in between services. It was after first service, and this guy comes in, doesn't go to the church, and somehow he made it past the security team, just, you know, walked in under the guise of needing to use the restroom. So, you know, he just went, used the restroom, then he came back and he started, you know, taking video. This is the second time now this has happened. Started taking video of our violations. Uh, Pastor Mack then confronted him, as is our right, and he was, from what I understand, uh, I'm so glad I wasn't there, not to protect me from him, but to protect him from me. I mean that. No, I'm serious. And again, God knows my heart. I am ferociously protective of this church that God has granted me the profound privilege of being the pastor of and overseeing and protecting the flock. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, as long as the Lord gives me breath, as long as the Lord allows me this privilege, not on my watch, nobody's going to come into this church and cause problems. I'm going to tell you right now online, if you have nefarious or malicious intentions and you want to come, especially after what I just stated, this is private property. You will be kindly asked to leave, and if you do not leave, you will be removed. We will call the police, and you will be removed from this property. This is private property. And media. Uh, no media is allowed here. This is not a circus. This is a church. And for those that want to take video of the pastor's not wearing a mask. <gasps> Can you believe it? They're laying hands on him, praying over him. That's what we do in church. The worship team is singing. <gasps> I'm reporting you. Can you imagine? No, this is for real, right? Have you actually read the order, the amendment? I did. I read it. Barely. <laughs> it was not easy. Very painful. There's actually a section in there about singing. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. I wish I was. So, I mean, he just starts going off. I'm going to report. He did call the police. He said, I'm going to call every news station and media on the island, and I'm going to report you. I don't think you want me doing that, do you? That's what I mean by, it's a good thing I wasn't out there. <laughs> Why do I even bring this up? Because I want you to know we need to be as shrewd as serpents and harmless as doves. That's not the first time and it certainly won't be the last time. In fact, I would suggest that it's going to get even worse. And I want you to know if that you're planning to come, we welcome you. We're not going to turn anybody away. But you need to be prepared and you need to be prudent. We're going to do the best we can on our end to ensure a safe environment so we can worship as we have been commanded by God to do in this His church. But we also need your help as well. And we need you to understand what we're up against. And please, and this is very important. I know I, everything's important. Well, this is even more important. <laughs> we covet your prayers. The kind of things we're dealing with, and I believe will yet future, should the Lord Terry deal with, we really need your prayers, man. Please pray for us. Pray for me. I mean, we're facing some very, very difficult decisions and opposition. So, everybody okay? <laughs> Be that as it may, we're going to keep our hands to the plow. And we're going to press on. We're going to occupy until He comes. 
We're going to reach the lost with the gospel of Jesus Christ while there's still time. And we're going to continue doing what we're doing every week. There is coming, though, I should say, and just qualify, there is coming one week where we will not do this. And it won't be because we were shut down. <laughs> it's going to be because we were taken up. Just saying. But we're going to continue doing these weekly prophecy updates, and we're going to continue preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing the ABCs of salvation, which is just a childlike explanation of how to be saved. Before we get to the ABCs, I want to read a short praise report from an online member in the UK. He writes, I shared with a man on Monday the gospel and then provided him with a copy of the ABCs of salvation and he gave his life to Christ that evening. Ha! Oh, that's, you know, even if he didn't, I mean, this is a profound privilege, is it not? to lead somebody to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But even if it's just moving them closer to Jesus, and boy, we have before us, and I know maybe you tire of me saying this, but I say it again nonetheless. We have before us the grandest of opportunities, the opportunity of a lifetime, the likes of which we have never seen and may never have again to reach people for Jesus, even with a mask. In fact, I being the, you know, I know they have clinical terms for my sense of humor, but I use the mask when I'm going through the checkout, you know, wheezing and everything. And so I'm, I'm looking at it because they're wearing a mask too. You think they like wearing that mask? No, they have to, or else they're not going to be able to work. So I'll say something to them like, <laughs> Hey, how, how's it going? Um, how are how, how you feeling? <laughs> well, actually, I'm a little bit dizzy and uh, oxygen deprived. And I know it's kind of, kind of a bummer, huh? Yeah. Well, listen, you, you have a blessed day. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you today. You keep in mind now, you, you know how many customers have went through that checkout and probably read him the riot act? Well, we have to social distance. By the way, I'm going to put my mask down below my nose. So there. Just the, because people are on edge. And just to have somebody go through the checkout and say, hey, and actually care, you know, because there's a difference between saying, hey, how you doing? Yeah, fine. How you doing? Fine. Really? No, it's more like this. It's like, hey, how you doing, man? I don't know how you're really doing. And really, you care. I, I, re, I really want to. So what I, I know I talk about poke. We'll, we'll get, we're almost done. Just hang in there. But um, so food land, spicy ahi poke. So there's this guy behind the counter. He knows whenever he sees me in line, he always loves it. He always kind of, and I can tell he's smiling even behind the mask, you know, because his eyes are, you know, either that or he's, you know, I don't know. You know, the one thing about masks is, you, you know, you save a lot on breath mitts because nobody can smell your breath. But anyway, so when he sees me coming, he, I, I always say to him, man, you know, because I, I saw a customer one time, just, I mean, chew him out. You're ripping me off. And this guy was so gracious, not a Christian that I can tell. And so when I got up there, I just said, man, Dude, you handled that so good. Man, if that were me. <laughs> no, I'm not, I wouldn't do that. I would never. You should always be careful about people who are serving. I'm really digressing now, I know. But just, I mean, move them closer to Jesus. If, if the Lord gives you the privilege of leading them in a prayer to accept Christ, wow! And what an opportunity we have right now, because people are hurting. People are scared. They're so fearful. 
People need Jesus. What are the ABCs of salvation and the gospel? Well, let's start with the A. The A is for admit that you're a sinner. Acknowledge that you've sinned and that you need the Savior. This is Romans 3.10. It says, there is no one righteous, not even one. And Romans 3.23 tells us why. It's because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But here's the good news. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the gospel. He came, He paid in full for us to give to us this gift of eternal life. That's the good news that Jesus came, He was crucified, buried, and rose again on the third day, and He's coming back again one day soon and very soon. The B is for believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And as Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, that God raised Jesus from the dead. It says, if you believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. That is definite. It's not tentative. The verdict is in. The jury's not out. You will be saved. And the C lastly is for call upon the name of the Lord. Or as Romans 10, 9 and 10 also says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And here's why. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. And lastly, Romans 10, 13, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Why don't you stand? We'll close in prayer. We'll have the worship team come up. I just want to say for anybody watching online, thanks for sticking it out. (laughs) I would like to lastly say that if you've never called upon the name of the Lord, this is no time to delay the most important decision of your life for eternal life. Jesus is coming. He came the first time to pay the penalty, the sin debt, the death penalty for our sin. And He's coming back again. And He tells us in His Word that He will come and He will take us out of this world in the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ, which can happen at any time. Nothing has to happen before the rapture happens. It's imminent. If you've never called upon the name of the Lord, I implore you today to do so. Today is the day of salvation. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much. I thank you for the blessed hope. It's really... Our only hope, our only hope is in you. Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in you. Lord, you promised us that you go and you went to prepare a place for us. That where you are, we may be also. So Lord, I just pray for anyone who has never called upon you, confessing with their mouth, believing in their heart, acknowledging their sin, putting their trust in you for the forgiveness of sin. I pray that today they would come to repentance and make the most important decision of their life for eternal life while there's still time. And there is still time. And that's the good news. And Lord, thank you. And lastly, Lord, (laughs) And I think when I pray this and say this, I do so on behalf of everybody here and 
watching online. Maranatha. <laughs> Come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.